In those days, practically everybody we know had one. No respectable home in the 60s and 50s and 60s would be without one. So what exactly was this indispensable article? An indoor loo? A motor scooter? Or maybe even a washing machine? It's like you'd say a hoover for a vacuum cleaner. For an old record place, you say a damn set. And that was the one that everybody remembers as being the one from the period. Even today, I mean, you say Dan Set, they think of record players. Ooh, well, I got a gal with a record machine when it comes to rocking. She was a queen. Well, I could dance every Saturday night. Well, I'm a little nut and hold it tight. Music and records were an essential part of life in the 50s and 60s for ordinary teenagers, as well as for pop stars like Cliff Richard. When rock and roll was in its infancy, Everybody had a dance set. I mean, I definitely have one. You know, one of the ones where you put the arm up and you could put a little pile of records on and they just flopped down and the whole thing wobbled for a while. And if you were really lucky, it didn't jump in the grooves. So, yeah, I can remember my dance set with great affection. The story actually begins at the turn of the century. I'm Sam Margolin. My grandfather, Maurice Margolin, came over to England from Russia and he started a small furniture factory. He had eight children and most of the boys joined in the family firm. Winter time or summer time or leisure time and pleasure time The daily times at Big Ben chimes are radio time the Margolin family business became Danset Products Limited and was floated on the stock exchange in the early 60s. And the original handful of staff grew to a workforce of several hundred. Nathan Field, company chairman. It was a family business and that family extended really to all its employees. The place was small enough to create a very warm, bustling, friendly cooperative atmosphere. The kind is hard to see these days. At one time, we had people queuing up outside the warehouse, waiting for their orders to be made. More and more outworkers were brought in because we couldn't make every box ourselves. Eventually, the uh, factory manager, Bar Trip, had a brother who started his own factory and made boxes for us. So uh, Old Street became a assembly centre. The amplifiers were coming in one delivery, Giant lorries would drive up with 250 or 300 or 500 boxes on, which would be, have to be unloaded and taken in to be assembled and so on. I can remember these boxes being stacked up by the 100 all over the building. The Old Street building was groaning at the, at the joints, really. They had so many record players going through the factory. They are an icon of the uh, 50s, 60s. They just absolutely are. You've seen it on so many album covers, adverts and all the rest. They're very, very simple, electronically speaking. So I don't see any reason why they shouldn't survive another 30 years. 